Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Good evening. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Lord, bless this word. Lord, forgive us, Jesus. Guide us, teach us, instruct us, help us. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. If you turn your Bibles over to 1 Peter chapter 4, we're going to cover verse 12 through 19. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 19. This message is going to be called Growth Through Suffering. Growth Through Suffering. Let me start off with a simple story. When I was in Bible college, I was studying under many different professors. One per professor in particular, I'll just give you his name. His name is Professor uh, Ken Blumel. Amazing guy, amazing guy. When I first spoke with him about going to Epic Bible College, he was my advisor. He was my advisor most of the time. And this guy had a certain like grace to him. This guy was like, you could hear the grace off his lips and come to find out he did ministry for 40 years or so, or was a pastor for 40 years. And now he's a professor at a Bible college. I took my courses online. I never actually got to meet him face to face. Maybe one day I will, I know in heaven, but maybe down here, who knows? But this professor had a certain grace to him that was like unlike the other professors, except the other one. His name was Charles Williams or Williams Charles. I don't know. The second. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, they had a certain grace to them. And I even asked the professor at one point in time where I was like, what books do you read? I was asking him, what books does he read? Because in my heart, which I'm sure he knew by the Spirit of God, I wanted to climb this spiritual ladder as if I know the same thing he knows, I would grow in the same grace that he's growing in. But I didn't know it was grace, but I knew there was a power behind his words. But as I just said, grace, the only way to grow in grace is not through climbing this spiritual ladder. Do you hear me out? Say that again. The only way to grow in grace is not to human effort of climbing some kind of spiritual ladder like all the other false religions of the world or cults, right? Which makes it about our ability. If you notice anything about any man-made religion or cult or whatever, it's all about a person's ability to obtain this enlightenment, if I could say, or this higher power kind of concept. But in Christianity, it's the complete opposite in nature. And that's what we're going to dive in here to see in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 19, is how you actually grow in Christ. Okay? So, it's actually titled in this book, Christian Suffering. It's a little sneak peek. Of what we're going to get into so without further ado let's get started again this message is called growth through suffering amen first peter chapter 4 verse 12 through 19 dear friends don't be surprised when the fury ordeal comes among you to test you as if something unusual were happening to you Instead, rejoice as you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may also rejoice with great joy when his glory is revealed. If you are ridiculed for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of the glory of God rests on you. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in having the, that name. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the, God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who disobey the gospel of God? And if a righteous person is saved with difficulty, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? 
So then, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while doing what is good. Let's pray. Lord, bless this word. <clears throat> Lord, forgive us. Lord, guide us. Lord, help us and teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, <clears throat> in order to become more spiritual in man's world or more powerful or more enlightened in man's world, like Wayne's world, man's world, man's world, gotta get stronger in man's world. If you're trying to get stronger in man's world, you gotta go to the gym. If you're gonna get wiser in man's world, you gotta go to college, right? If you wanna get more spiritual in man's world, you gotta do something. But as we read, in the Christian world, the only way to grow is through suffering. In man's world, <clears throat> no one wants to suffer. <coughs> no one wants to suffer, right? No one wants to go through excruciating pain to grow. And I'm going to pause here for a second and say... The only way to grow is through suffering. The only way to grow is through suffering. God turns our suffering into his glory. God turns our death into our resurrection, right? And so it's foolishness to man to suffer. Matter of fact, man and humans want to escape suffering. We do everything we can to make our lives the most comfortable as possible. And we look at look down on people who have a very uncomfortable life. But if you look at that theology, you take that idea and you bring it through history, everyone has suffered unjustly. Everyone was every other person was born into a situation that was not fair. Or actually everyone, because it wasn't fair that this person was born into a wealthy family, that's not fair. And this person was born in a poor family. That's not fair either. Right? And so we try to reason with that idea like and we try to avoid suffering even the homeless or poor person wants to avoid suffering that's why nobody likes to work nobody likes to work because we don't like to suffer because working is suffering everybody wants to be married everybody wants the glory of marriage sex in an intimate relationship with somebody depends on who you are <laughs> But everybody wants the glory, but they don't want the spouse that nags at them all the time. They don't want the suffering of it, right? Let's be honest. Everybody wants friends, but they don't want needy friends. Or everybody wants friends where they're always around, right? Some want friends when they're around every once in a while, or barely. Some want friends all the time, right? And it depends on who you are. That could be a form of suffering. Oh, man, you're always around. Oh, go get a life, you know? Or, man, you're not around too much. And the other person's like, I don't really want to be around that much, right? It just depends, right? And that could be a suffering for in, in, in different causes or different ways. Essentially, everyone wants the best life. And what the best life looks like is to avoid suffering, right? By preference, whatever that is. Obviously, sin. Right? Sin causes us suffering, but for some reason, we keep running to it. Right? Maybe we don't think it's that bad, like Adam and Eve. Oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> it just destroys everything and ruins my life and eventually kills me. and sends me into eternal damnation and punishment and hell, but it, I'll, I'll deal with it. <laughs> but that's the reality. We want our sin to be our reward. And God's like, yeah, it's your reward to hell if that's what you want. Right? How do I fit this sin thing in with this grace thing and allow, to, allow myself to live in this, right? Everybody wants sin, but without the punishment of sin. Everybody wants glory, but they don't want to suffer. Like every athlete wants the golden medal, the golden trophy, the prestige and, and people admiring them, but they don't want to go through the hard training. And... Given man's understanding is the more suffering you go through, the more likely you're going to get that gold medal, you're going to get that gold trophy, you're going to get that um, ribbons or whatever they put around your neck, right? 
in that picture in the newspapers or whatever but it takes great suffering to go go through that as the apostle paul writes i just say everything in the new testament after the book of the uh, the book of the gospels is apostle paul <laughs> I could be totally wrong, obviously. I know I am. John was written, first John was written by Apostle Paul. <laughs> I just, if I don't know who said it, I'm just going to say Paul. So, but you can find it in the New Testament. But what Paul says is that the athletes go through, I think he actually did write this. They go through suffering to obtain a temporary golden medal, golden prize, whatever, right? But we as Christians don't go through suffering for no reason, let alone to obtain something temporary. We go through suffering to attain an eternal glory where the crown will never fade away. In other words, when people go, wow, you did that? First off, it's gonna be more glorious. Second off, it's gonna be, whoa, you did that for eternity. But obviously all of that glory and all that victory belongs to Christ, which will lay our crowns of our victory in Christ that we gave him while we were down here. We're going to lay that down back at his feet. Amen. And, and by his grace, he'll allow us to put it on our head. <laughs> Pick up your crowns, put it back on your head because none of you deserve any of it. And I gave you all of the victory down there. Amen. <laughs> but we don't, labor or suffer for a temporary glory we labor and we suffer for an eternal glory as a christian if you're looking for this earth or any form of it to be your reward you are going to be disappointed every step of the way we say that again if you are looking for your reward here on earth as a christian follower of christ you are going to be disappointed every step of the way. People are going to let you down. You're going to let you down. People are going to sin against you. You're going to sin against you. Demons are going to attack you. It's just unjust, right? Everything down here. So our reward is in heaven. Amen. Your reward is in heaven. Then you have a hope that surpasses all understanding and wisdom. And then you're able to get yourself out of the depression, get yourself out of the mire, get yourself out of the dark places when you go, man, they let me down again, right? That's how I've gotten myself out is by realizing or the Holy Spirit telling me, your hope isn't down here, Jeremy, your reward isn't down here, it's in heaven. But they did this and they did that, blah, blah, blah. And God's like, yeah, I know. And I'm crediting you that to righteousness and I'm going to reward you in heaven for what they did, right? So get back up and continue to do the labor of the Lord. Amen. And God does reward us little by little down here, but not nearly, obviously, as he does upstairs. So down here, you might not see any rewards. You might see like 1% or point point or 0.0000.1% of the rewards down here, right? The point is don't look to this earth for your reward. Look to heaven. And so as we dive in here, we're seeing that the only way to grow, everybody wants to be more spiritual. Everybody wants the crown of life, but they don't want to go through suffering. And so what I was asking the professor is, Give me a step-by-step -step process of how to become more sanctified or how to become more like Christ, how to become more, you know, gracious. And, and, I, and even if he told me this, I still would have been like, well, how? Right? And, and then I would have turned that into a work. For example, if you would have said through suffering, I would have been like, all right, time to be an annoying Christian so I can suffer to grow in the grace of God. And that could do it. But after a while, I would be like, I'd probably despise suffering. And then I'd probably, it probably slingshot me back into uh, sin or to live for sin, if I could say, right? But now after these few years of, from that Bible college experience, it's been like four years. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, the only way to grow 
and become more spiritual, to become more like Christ, to become more gracious, to, to have the glory of God, as we read, rest on you is suffering. Because I sat there and read books, read books all day. I sat there and um, did a bunch of spiritual things that I thought were spiritual. But the only way that I actually learned to become like Christ was through suffering. Before we start to exposit this passage, I'm going to say this much. Jesus was the only man, the only person who suffered the most in this world. Jesus was the only person who suffered the most in this world. Jesus was the only person who suffered the most in this world. I've got to say that three times. Amen? Not just for Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but just because it gets, it hits it, right? Something about three times hits it, like Peter denied Jesus three times. Jesus restored him three times. Here's the thing. The Bible says that Jesus became a curse. The Bible says that he suffered for all of man's sins. All sins that would ever exist, that man would ever sin against, or any sin, even, maybe even the demons. I wouldn't doubt it because he's God, right? That Jesus bore all sins on his body, though he never did anything wrong, right? There's another key. Don't do, if you do wrong, yeah, you should suffer. Duh, that's what we read here. But if you didn't do anything wrong, that's how you, actually how you grow in grace. So Jesus became sin, which means that he took every sin that ever existed and he became it, though he never sinned. And then, guess what? He resurrected in glory. That means he has every sin already redeemed and every, ever covered. He took the keys, as some would say, from the devil. And in victory, he went back to heaven. We have all victory in Christ, no matter what it is. All our victory is in Christ. So if we're looking for victory, we go to Jesus. And you go to Jesus through prayer. Amen? And what prayer and reading of the word does is like if you plant a seed, and Jesus says unless the seed dies, it doesn't bear fruit. You plant the seed, and actually you water it, it gets sunlight, and then it dies. Once it dies, then that's when the roots and all the germination start happening, and then it grows up into the little stem that we call the beginning of the tree. But the scriptures even say the sun doesn't grow the tree. The water doesn't grow the tree. It's actually God who brings the increase. In other words, we can't grow without suffering. It's easy to read the Bible. If you just read the Bible a million times, if that determined your spiritual growth, then you have control over that. You have control over your enlightenment, over your, your ability to go from here to here, right? And then we can boast, and then we don't need God, right? But if your growth is not dependent on you, and it's dependent on God, then our part is, as Apostle Paul says, one person sows and another waters. But it's God who brings the increase. And what I've learned is the increase only comes when there's pressure. So Jesus, who is God, became a man, became sin, infinite pressure, or lots of pressure on him, every sin that ever existed on him and that that it did not overcome him but he overcame it and then his roots started to grow out it's the same thing with a tree you plant a tree seed what's grow why it's growing is because it's trying to fight did you know that butterflies if you try to help them when they're hatching burst out of their cocoon they could die because as they break out of the cocoon they have to stretch and they have to use their muscles. And what it's actually doing is creating blood flow into their wings. So someone actually tried to help a butterfly hatch. And because they did it, 
the blood flow didn't travel all the way to the wings and then it died trying to hatch out of the cocoon. You and I are the same way. The only way we're gonna grow is when there's in, in a lot of pressure. And this goes back to what man means for evil, God turns it into good. What the devil and people mean to destroy us, God uses that to grow us when there's a lot of pressure. That's how plants finally come, they germinate and their roots grow deeper. And did you know when there's a storm or harsh weather that it forces the tree and its roots to go deeper into the soil to look for water? That's why when hard times come, Jesus says, don't build your house on the sand, build your house on the rock. For when the winds and waves show up and it makes your hard life hard, that means you, des you desire to look for God. Did you know that people are only looking for God when they're suffering? And I don't just mean obviously unbelievers, but when I'm suffering as a Christian, I'm looking for God even more. I'm reading my Bible even more. I'm praying even more. I'm repenting even more. Did I do something wrong? You know, like it actually draws me near Christ more. But when things are good and things are great, I'm not looking for Jesus. I'm not really reading my Bible. I'm not really praying. I'm definitely not repenting, right? And so there's no quick spiritual instant growth pill that we take. But what we can do is we can water ourselves with the word of God and prayer and healing through repentance and forgiveness. And when we've done all we can do, then God brings the increase. So, you know, we say when there's a, a newborn baby, a year or two old or something, and they're, they're screamish and they're whining. And I say why to my wife, why are they always whining and crying? What's wrong with them? And she says, oh, their teeth are growing in. They're growing teeth and it's painful, right? Or she would say, oh, their limbs and their arms are growing and it hurts. And I'm like, dang, I don't remember that. I mean, I'm not getting any taller, right? I think there's a cutoff point, but, but, but the, 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 the saying is true. When you're growing, you're in pain. You know, I used to work out at the gym with a buddy who was essentially a bodybuilder. And if you see any muscles on me, it's simply because of that dude in the military. When we were in Iraq, he would take me to the gym. I was taking creatine and all that stuff because that's what he told me to do. And I got pretty big. <laughs> and it's all because of that guy. Um, I've worked out on my own, but not to the extent that this guy pushed me to. And he pushed me and pushed me to go beyond what I was comfortable with. If you want to grow, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Amen. And so I was going through this working out with this guy and I was like, this is painful. And he says, and, and he would switch the body exercises, particularly the arm exercises and the legs. He would, he'd be like, we're doing this leg exercise today. And I was like, ready to do the same one that we did last week or the other day. And he's like, nope, we're changing it. And he always changed it up and I go, why? And he says, you have to, you have to shock the muscles because there's a thing called muscle memory where your brain starts to create this memory. And if it memorizes how you're doing stuff, then you can't grow. So you have to shock the muscles by doing things differently. And we got buff quick. He was already buff. He got more buff. I had no muscles and I gained muscle and people were like, how are you getting so buff? They're like, how are you getting so buff? And I was like, I'm working out with this guy and he's shocking my muscles. Hear me out. He's, he's challenging me in different areas in different ways. And that's the thing. We need to be challenged in different areas, in different ways in order to grow. And that my friends is through suffering. The only way to grow is through suffering. But we know man doesn't want to suffer. Nobody wants to suffer, but to become like Christ is the only way to grow. Verse 12, dear friends, don't be surprised when the fury trial comes among you to test you as if something unusual happened to you. Oh, why am I suffering? And this is what he says. 
but rejoice as you share in the same sufferings of Christ. Christ, who never sinned, became every sin and resurrected beyond it, that all grace might abound. All our victory is in him. And we, like Christ, who follow Christ, suffer as well. And that as we go through suffering, from suffering to suffering, we go also from glory to glory, so that you may also rejoice with great joy when, when his glory is revealed. When his glory is revealed and when his glory is revealed in you. And check this out. He says in verse 14, if you are ridiculed for the name of Christ, you are blessed. What do you mean? Because the spirit of glory of God rests on you. You have the glory of God resting on you. You know, I used to hang out with certain preachers. And when I was younger in the faith, I felt the glory of God around them. The presence of God, the presence of peace, the presence of uh, grace around them. And I was like, wow. And then I ran around those same pastors and I didn't feel it anymore. And I said, Lord, why, why don't I feel it anymore? He's like, because you have suffered just as much as they suffered. But then I run around other preachers and pastors that the Lord has let me be around. And I go, wow, the glory and the grace around this person is, is really thick and tangible. How do I become like this? And then I went through years of uh, suffering. And then I was around that person and I couldn't feel it anymore. And, and, and I'm sure God's like, now they feel it around you. You ever been around certain Christians? You're like, wow, there's so much grace or presence of God and peace around this person. How do they become like this? Some would say prayer. I say suffering, right? It's because this person has suffered more than this person. It's because this person has suffered more than this person for my name. It's because you have suffered for my name more than this person. The only way to grow in the character and grace and presence and glory of God is through suffering. Verse 15, let none of you suffer as a murderer. That's not how you grow in Christ. Or a thief or an evildoer or a meddler. You don't suffer and grow. You don't grow in the grace of God through sin. You only grow in the grace of God through righteousness. Amen. Verse 16, but if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glory, glorify God in having the, that name. That, that Jesus says to the, the apostles before they're apostles, it was James and John, let us sit at your right and left hand. And I like how the chosen did it. Jesus just kind of snaps and he's like, cries. And he's like, you don't understand what you're talking about. Not just that he would die, right? They didn't even know that he would die. They're like, you're gonna God, you're gonna leave us? You're gonna you're gonna die? And they're not really getting it. It's not clicking for them. But most importantly, he's saying, you don't understand the suffering that I'm going to go through. You don't understand that in order to sit at my right and left hand side, you have to go through great suffering. You know, when we die and we go to heaven, the people who are gonna sit at Jesus' right and left hand side, in other words, closest to Jesus are the people who have lived in this world and have suffered greatly for Christ. That's what I think with the transfiguration is Elijah and Moses were standing next to Jesus in his fully glorified state. Who's gonna be next to those guys? May it might be the apostles, we don't know. That all might see forever what you suffered for Christ while you were down here on this earth. And I honestly think there's going to be a lot of the people, the, a lot of people who were martyred, literally killed, and a lot of people who went through excruciating suffering, right, you know, rightfully so that they're standing at, just sitting at Jesus' right and left-hand side. It could be James and John, because all the apostles except one uh, died of martyrdom, John, right? And of course, uh, Judas killed himself, so he's going to be in hell. But you get what I'm saying? If you're trying to sit at Jesus' right and left hand side, you have to go through excruciating pain. And understand this, Jesus 
went through the most excruciating pain there ever could be. He bore the sins of all human beings that ever existed or would ever exist. Are you willing to go through the drink from the same cup I'm willing to drink from? And so in the, in the actual real spirituality is the way you become more spiritual. It's not how much Bible knowledge you have. Anyone can sit there and read and study all day. It's, it's not how much you do necessarily, right? Because those are human efforts. It's all on how much you suffer for righteousness. Amen? But who wants to go through suffering? Nobody. But the scriptures say, rejoice in your suffering. It's because you're going through this. It's because you are doing the will of God. You're, going, you're being slandered and mocked and hated. It's because you're actually becoming like Christ. You actually look like Jesus. Not physically, spiritually. Amen. And attitude and behavior. Verse 17, for the time has come for the judgment to begin with the house of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who disobey the gospel? Amen. And if a righteous person is saved with difficulty, we are saved because we go through suffering. You can't obtain salvation without suffering. And neither can you become holy without suffering, which is called sanctification. And it says here, and if a righteous person is saved with difficulty, which means suffering, because that's the entire context, is talking about suffering, what will become of the ungodly who doesn't want to suffer? <laughs> the only way to become holy and pure and righteous is through suffering for righteous reasons, which is to follow the Spirit and live for Christ. But the only way that people want to follow Christ is if they don't have to suffer. That's why there's all these false gospels out there. There's all these false Christians out there. There's all these false churches out there that promise you that you can obtain the same glory and even more down here if you avoid suffering. And that, my friend, is a false gospel. Because Jesus says it this way. He says, through great trials and tribulations, through great suffering, will you inherit or enter the kingdom of God? If you are not going through great suffering, my friends, and greater and greater and greater, then you are not following Christ. If you're not making enemies more and more and more, and not because you want to, but because you're just doing the right thing, you're not following Christ. Hear me out? But who wants to, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Everybody wants glory, the glory of God, but nobody wants to suffer. But Jesus says, the only way into this glory, into my kingdom, is through suffering. Verse 19. So then, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while doing what is good. While doing what is good, we entrust ourselves to him. Not that there's good in this world, other than the goodness that flows from heaven through us to become Jesus and God's hands and feet. Not that he needs us, but he wants to use us to bring good to humanity and to ultimately draw people to himself to save us from eternal damnation, right? But to bring us hope here on this earth. But this must only happen through suffering. Suffering. And that's why so many people, you listen to the four soils. The second one, they didn't want to go through suffering. They started to go through suffering and then they fell away from Christ. Many people fall away from Christ for many reasons. One of them is the suffering. And I'm telling you, my friends, the more you follow Jesus, the greater and greater the suffering gets. Amen. But the more glory and grace and peace abounds. That's all I got for you. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines. This is I Am Loved Church. <sighs> Growth through suffering. Let's pray. Lord, bless this word. Bless them. Help them. Heal them. Guide them. Give them a faith that surpasses all wisdom and understanding. That goes through the fury trial, the fury furnace. That glorifies your name through their suffering. Not for sinful purposes 
but for righteous purposes that bring good. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and God bless.